Welcome to another edition of our Ramily Bonding Series. Emmanuel Barbari joined by Director of Basketball Operations at Kansas, Fordham Class of 1989, Fred Quartelbaum. Fred, thanks for joining us today. Manny, thanks so much for having me. You mentioned 89. I have to start to date myself. Like, man, it's been, been quite, a, quite a long time. But uh, obviously, you know, a Ram through and through. And uh, I want to just say thanks so much for having me uh, on this today. Of course, Coach, a long journey from 1989 to today where you're part of the staff at Kansas. This is a season unlike any other that anyone's been a part of, the protocols, the pandemic, battling through adversity. How do you feel the team as a whole has responded to that adversity? You know, I mean, I think we've, we've done a f- phenomenal job in the sense that our, our medical and our training staff have done a great job of educating us in providing the medical protocols and guidelines for us to follow. You know, we are in that, in that bubble. And for us, knock on wood, you know, we're the only team, from what I've been told, that has not been shut down over an extended period of time in the Big 12. So kudos to our players to, to continue to, you know, when they're not around us, that they continue to maintain social distancing, they continue to wear their masks, and just be mindful and aware that, you know, one small hiccup could affect, you know, could affect our whole program, could affect our team moving forward. So up to this point, we've had no, no major issues, you know, in terms of being shut down. Coach, you're known for your, your attitude, your optimism. I saw back in April during the quarantine, you had a Coach Q vlog where you walked all of the Kansas fans through your everyday routine and how things were going for you. How do you feel that optimism and attitude and perspective on life has translated into your coaching career? Well, I think, and I love the word optimism. You know, I think, uh, you know, we hear that a lot. And, and, and just being intentional about it just understanding there's always a, a, a bigger and a brighter outcome. You know, we have an opportunity to impact not only our lives, but we have an, an opportunity to impact, you know, the lives of others. And that's something I, I, I live by. I'm intentional about it. You know, when I've been asked, hey, wh- what do you do at Kansas? And as you mentioned, my title, well, when usually people ask me what I do at Kansas, I say three things. I say I show up every day, I take ownership, and I create experiences. And what that means is every day I want to grow. I want to add value to people's life every single day. And when you talk about uh, uh, ownership, you know, I want to be a contributor. I want to be a caretaker uh, of our program and everyone who's associated with it. And when you go to experiences, I want to be uh, uh, at the forefront of creating positive experiences for the people each and every day. So that's kind of how I live my life. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's small little detailed things that, that, go, that go such a long way. And it's been able to carry over into my coaching philosophy, into my coaching style. Uh, you know, and when, you, when you're talking about building a team, you want to build it on positivity. You want to build it on, you know, looking at adversity and obstacles as opportunities to grow and to get better. So that's kind of been my, my deal every single day. And, uh, you know, I, I've been, uh, you know, here in Kansas for the, for, for the past eight years and just been able to be able to share that, that dose of uh, positivity and a dose of optimism on a daily basis. You mentioned those qualities. You served in the U.S. Navy from 1992 to 1996, and it stresses the importance of those pillars, integrity, high character, commitment. In what ways do those go over to basketball and kind of work hand in hand? Oh, there's, 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 so, many, there's so many ways it, it does. You know, and, and it usually really kind of hits home, you know, Manny, when things aren't going your way you know, or, or you're faced with a situation that, you know, is not in favor of you. So when you talk about those qualities and you talk about those pillars, it's so, so important that you have, we we like to use the term, I like to use the term selfless thoughts, not selfish thoughts. And, you know, when you're dealing with a team and bringing a team together, it's usually, you know, individual parts that you're constantly trying to, you know, galvanize in terms of a whole so the basis of, you know, of, of, of belief and alignment goes so far. And it's something that you, it just doesn't happen over time. That's why when you talk about teams, teams aren't real teams in the beginning of the season. Teams really start to become teams 
around that January, February, where now it's not about me, it's about we. It's about the, the name on the front of your jersey. So we constantly, we're intentional about these different concepts about honor and integrity, you know, and others first, you know, leading by example. All those things are instilled not only in me, but they're also instilled in our program, which is, you know, obviously the place like Kansas, you see the winning culture that, you know, Bill Self and, and our staff have, have done on a consistent basis. Yes, you have to have talent. We all know that. But there's certain intangibles that you have to be intentional about and you have to live each and every day. So, yes, the, at the Naval Academy, learning those uh, and building those pillars, I've been able to carry those on, you know, 25 or 26 years later in my, in my coaching profession. As we near the important month of March in college basketball, first February, Black History Month, and at Kansas, you're the Equity and Inclusion Leadership Committee, one of the leaders over there, particularly with the events of this past summer, Coach, and the role college and pro sports have played in raising awareness. What has that experience on the committee entailed for you? Yeah, I think it's been fantastic, and, and we'll kind of rewind. That's a, that's a really, really good question, because when this pandemic hit and then there was some unrest, you know, in our, in our country, you know, we had to figure out and really be intentional about how we're going to move forward with our student athletes or in general, not just men's basketball, because when our players left us in March, it was a disconnect. It, there was no celebration. Obviously, we were the number one team in the in the country. You know, we were riding. We, I mean, our our mojo, everything, our chemistry, our alignment, our beliefs were like we 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 had a really good chance to to win a national championship. And then we get the call that you know there won't be a Big Twelve conference championship. And then a few days later, there won't be an NCAA uh, championship tournament and that all our student athletes had to leave campus. So it was an interesting part when they left because there was, there was nothing attached to it. It was like, all right, guys, we'll see you later. Um, we'll, we'll let you know what's going on. So now you get to a point of a space where now is obviously the George Floyd, there were so many things that took, care, that took place beyond the Taylor. Now we're, we're, we're gonna bring a student athlete that left our campus in March that's not gonna be the same student athlete that's coming back in July. How are we going to, you know, how are we going to, 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 to massage it? How are we gonna connect? Cause it's not, I mean, the platform is different. More student athletes have been outspoken what's going on in our country. So, you know, you hear, as a, you hear a term, hey, you, you, as a coach, hey, you gotta meet student, you gotta meet them halfway. You gotta meet, and then they'll come to you. Our approach or my approach was, there's no halfway now. You have to go all the way. You have to go all the way over to them because this is a defining time that's going on in our country and our student athletes are, are at a point now where they're unsure about a lot of different things, what direction they're going, uh, how they feel about things. So empathy is also another part that we have to really take into account when these student athletes come back. So that was not only a basketball uh, conversation, it became an athletic department conversation. So moving forward a little bit, Manny, that's where the DEI leadership committee started to come to play, to bring in administrators that from all different backgrounds that have all different stories, how can we better serve our student athletes? So it has moved, it has moved in, a, in a great way and one of the things that we, we did is we wanted to make sure all our student athletes, in particular, I'll talk more about men's basketball, that we had 100% of our student athletes that are eligible, because we have a few uh, students that are not from here, that they were all registered to vote. So that was the first thing we did. So walking through the process and defining the process and why you're voting, and here are the people you need to look at, regardless of Democratic or Republican, we're giving them that, that education, bringing in folks to talk to them about, you know, the voting process. So we were great, gracious that the guys were aligned with this. And again, these, these initiatives were also shared as a group. 
if these want, they, we want to do these things. So that was the first thing. Another thing that what we did, uh, we brought in the uh, we brought in a representative from the uh, Brown versus Board of Ed, which is in Topeka. So we brought we brought a representative to talk about that. You know, we we actually coach was great. We had our had our uh, student athletes as a team watch thirteen, and discuss and talk about issues that not only took place then, but in some way are taking place right in front of our eyes. So we kind of formed this unbelievable bond of education and engagement, you know, with our student athletes, and they began to speak up about their their experiences, their differences, where they're from, and how they look at things that now may be a little bit different. So I think it really brought our team together in that aspect. So we, we're just continuing along that, that plateau of educating our student athletes, as well as our administration. Jeff Long has done a great job of giving us an opportunity to be the front line of the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Thing we're going with, you mentioned Black History, and I apologize for being long-winded, but Black History Month. Uh, we started the Marion Washington Trailblazer series. And that in honor of Black History Month, we we recognize you know four pillars of of African Americans who have had an unbelievable impact and influence, you know, on our sports program, but also our communities and the university as a whole. And this year for men's basketball, it's a gentleman by the name of Levanus Squires. And Levanus played here, you know, in, in uh, back in the uh, uh, early 50s. I talked to Levanus, as a matter of fact, last night after our game. He's 90 years old. And I really uh, formed a relationship with him last March during the pandemic because I wanted to make sure that obviously he's up in age, uh, has a few medical things. I just want to make sure that he was doing okay. He lives in Pasadena, California. And our relationship is, our bond has just become uh, unbelievably strong. And he's so excited about you know just being connected with our with our Kansas basketball program. So he will be our honoree this year to of the Marion Washington uh, Trailblazer series. So extremely delighted, and we're just happy. You know, the Levanus is still with us, and we probably would not be here if he wasn't the first or the the one who kind of set the tone for giving you know. African Americans a platform, a place, whether it be athletically or administratively, uh, here at the University of Kansas. I'll leave you with this. You graduated Fordham in the late 80s. You've spanned a long journey since then to the position you are today. What does Fordham and Rose Hill mean to you specifically? You know, I grew up, I was born in the Bronx. I was born on uh, Davidson Avenue, which was from what they say, it's 3.1 miles from Fordham's campus. So I've been familiar with Fordham's campus since I, I was a child, uh, obviously right up the road uh, from, from, my, from my, my birth home. Uh, my four years at, at, at Fordham um, was probably the best growing experience that I could ever imagine, academically, you know, athletically, uh, socially, uh, and this, the, the network of, of friends that I've been able to keep, you know, in contact, you know, throughout over the years. And we've all talked, that's why I asked you, you know, where you live and you mentioned Walsh and my eyes kind of lit up because, you know, when I think of Walsh Hall, I just think of all the, the uh, you know, students that, you know, lived in Walsh and the connections that we continue to forge throughout the course of the year. It's a beautiful campus. I mean, how could you not say it's arguably one of the best campuses that uh, that's around in the country. And I've been fortunate to be on a lot of different campuses based off my, my career. But, you know, it's a beautiful campus. People love Fordham. Uh, the connection, the alumni network is, is phenomenal. Uh, and it's just a, a, just a great place that you can grow and develop, you know, as a student, as a person. And I took, you know, full advantage of that. And I love the fact that I can always call Fordham University my home. Coach Q, we really appreciate a few minutes today. Thanks for taking the time and best of luck as you bark on the rest of the season. Manny, thanks so much for having me. I and mean, you be safe and you have a great day.